Maybe by 500, I'd be like, all right. I need another 500. Yeah, exactly. 500 is so so far out that you're like, that's forever. Yeah. And who knows what would be happening, like where we'll be in different planets or different dimensions and or extinct. Yeah, exactly. So (laughs) I'm curious. Oh, I got a great show for you, though, if you're into that shit, man. Tell me. Jesus. Three body problem on on Netflix. Here we are with another episode of the Robert Patton Global Podcast, but I'm here with a returning guest, one of my favorite guests, Jesse Merle, Jesse on fire, the man with the news for the UFC and world kind of news with Diddy and whatever's whatever's hot topic, you seem to break it down. And, That's right. Uh, yeah, I appreciate your content. Appreciate you working with Sheath. <clears throat> um, oh, dude, I love working with Sheath, and I'm lo- I'm looking at uh, the the news for today right now. Uh, Mike Tyson sending a message to Jake Paul, and uh, <laughs> oh man, this is gonna be this is gonna be fun, dude. I think I think Tyson's gonna decapitate Jake, and everyone's gonna be all. I don't understand how I ever thought that this was gonna be like bad for mike he's gonna back he he has to back him into a corner if mike just backs jake into a corner and knocks his head off then that's how that's gonna work if jake can dance around and beat out tyson's cardio there's something there maybe just i don't know why anyone would think that tyson's cardio is gonna be a problem in a fight that that's short and also tyson like I don't. I don't know. It's like I. I. I followed Tyson's career so closely that I have so, like not just like his career, but also like him as a person. That I felt like I have such a. Uh, I don't know, like an educated opinion on what his mental state was, his drug use at the time, like all kinds of stuff. To where I'm looking at this like like 4D chess, and I'm just like these guys don't understand what's happening here. It's like uh, they're going back, and not to mention. If you watch the like, just like Roy Jones Jr. when he fought Mike Tyson, had like he was still fighting professionally. Like they're always super old. It's like yeah, he's still fighting as professional though. Like he's not. It's not like you know he's like he's like Bernard Hopkins, forty eight, who fought till he was like fifty two. You know what I mean? And Tyson looked excellent. And it's not just about like uh, I don't know. I feel like people don't remember how Tyson fights. Tyson is impossible to hit. Like that's people just think of Tyson as like he's like a. You know, like, oh, yeah, you know, he's got that. Like, they talk about him like he's one of these, like, like he's like Deontay Wilder or something. Like, oh, you know, he's got this big, you know, he's got a big right hand. It's like, bro, that is a horrendous take on how Mike Tyson (laughs) fights. It's just, it's like just absolutely fundamentally incorrect. Like, there's like, uh, it's like saying Alex Pereira is, is known for his grappling. It's just wrong. Like, just fucking incorrect. He is elusive. He's fast. He's he does the peekaboo thing where he's exactly. like impossible to hit. Yeah. He's like a fucking little bobblehead, dude. And then and his yeah. footwork is a hundred times better than Jake's. I just I don't understand it. I, I'm with Rogan. Rogan every time Rogan talks about it, he's like I don't understand what anybody is talking about. Like, but but you could tell Rogan is like me, where he was like a fanatical Tyson fan. But you just look like. This is the best way I could put it, actually. And I'm gonna put this in my video about it today. As a matter of fact, I need to write this down. Uh, the like the the reason that people are so worried about this fight is because Evander Holyfield got just fucking murked yep. by Vitor Belfort. Mm-hmm. And they are forgetting two things. Number one is that Vitor Belfort it was back on juice. Okay. Like mm-hmm. Vitor is like an absolute killing machine. Evander Holyfield took that fight on like 10 days notice and when they showed the footage of his training, bro, compare Evander's like pad work from right before that fight to Mike Tyson's right now. It's like like you're like like you would you wouldn't sanction that bout based on those two videos. You'd be all, bro, that guy's gonna he's gonna kill that guy. Like this, you can't put this guy in there with that guy. I'm thinking you're like Evander's like different. Biden level. Like Evander was Correct. like at a Biden level, and you know. Uh, Tyson's like at a Trump or whatever. Level, exactly. Younger. Yeah, yeah. Like if you were comparing like a battle of wits, Biden yeah. is Evander and Trump is Tyson. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a good, re- that's a good comparison that people maybe aren't thinking about, you know, cause they're just thinking this, their age only. 
And that's the only factor that Jake had. Literally, like there is one factor that is in Jake's favor, and it's age. That's it. Nothing else. Not one other factor is in Jake's. He's not more powerful than him. He's not faster than him. He's not better than him. He doesn't have better footwork. He's not better at controlling distance. He doesn't have the experience. His list of guys that he's beat is fucking laughable compared to Tyson's. Tyson has had a long time off. But he's doing a full training camp. He just fought against Roy Jones three years ago and looked a hundred times better than anybody thought he was going to. Like Jake Paul just fought a fucking Uber driver. It's yeah, literally that was crazy. It's Mike Tyson on a shitload of gear. He's gonna fuck, dude. He has the testosterone and and hormones of a twenty one year old, you know, and he's still fast as fuck. I mean, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I don't, I just, I don't understand it. If Tyson is going out there trying to knock out Jake. I just I don't see how this goes any other way. I th- but isn't it a, a, a uh, exhibition All kind lies. of? Okay, okay. Those at least, well, at least the they they it's it's like I talk to MVP like I, it's so weird because I fucking light J- I light Logan up all the time, but I'm like buddies with a bunch of guys at MVP promotions like Jake's Jake's outfit, and so I asked them I'm like, are these rule sets that have come out true? And they're like, every one of them is a complete lie. I'm like, all right. So they're going to do two minute rounds though. Or uh, that's not true either. They, they okay. might, but they haven't announced like no rule sets that have come out are true. Like they haven't like uh, they're either indetermined or just absolute not true. Like there's no, there's no like leaks or anything. Cause they haven't, they haven't put out a single piece of information. Nothing. Okay. All right. Well, it's going to be on Netflix for free. Yeah. So that's, you know, he's going to get a lot of eyeballs. And one thing Jake has, yeah is fucking the promotion capability but mike has that also so it should be pretty like blockbuster level of uh, entertainment value i did not watch jake's last fight nor did i watch tyson's last fight you didn't watch him fight roy jones i didn't do go watch that okay that'll change your mind you go watch that you're gonna be like oh yeah jake's fucked okay yeah i just for whatever reason i didn't i think it was a conflict with something else, else I was watching, probably. And the Jake Paul recent fight was... Why like, would you is this a Yeah, is this a joke? Because I have been watching his, you know, like Tyron Woodley and Ben Askren and Tommy Fury. And those were all, you know, relatively entertaining. Yeah. So... Dude, he couldn't knock out Nate Diaz. Oh, yeah. Why on earth is he going to be able to knock out Mike Tyson? Has anyone knocked out Nate Diaz? Nope. Yeah. But so. you know who's knocked out Mike Tyson? Evander Holyfield in his prime. Fucking these guys that are like, first of all, yeah, Lennox, prime Lennox Lewis. I mean, those are, you know, it's 20 years ago, but like, but the the late, the late ones, you know, when he was losing, he was not training. Like he, he straight, like this Mike Tyson beats that Mike Tyson. That, that Mike Tyson didn't want to fight. Like ever after every fight, he's like, I don't even want to do this anymore. He's like, I don't know. Like, I'm just doing this to pay my bills. Mike, dude, look at this. Mike Tyson has the most successful vape company in the world. Like, he is so fucking rich. He does not. What is that called? I can't. Look. Oh, Tyson. Duh. Is it it weed or nicotine? He's got both. Okay. These, and this is these are just like the the nicotine ones and they they are the highest selling fucking nicotine like they're the they're the any any state that I go to cuz they're the only ones I buy they're 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 the number one they're the front and center one this the only one anybody I see well like not the only one but most people these are like crazy popular. Yeah. He makes millions of dollars yeah. on these and that's not even and then the weed one is more popular dude he has so much fucking money he like if people think he's doing this because of the money i understand that too if people don't know that they think that tyson's taking this fight because he needs the money obviously that like that would affect my opinion too it's not that at all he doesn't need the money at all like he's doing mm-hmm. this because he wants to he wants to like do a full training camp and fight which is exactly what he's doing like well, I'm definitely going to be watching it, and so well, I we'll see what happens. I guess it's like he's going to Jake has the, his only chance is to dance around and like butterfly around as much as the whole fight, basically, and tire Tyson out. What did you think about um, Roadhouse, dude? <laughs> that's a great that's a great segue. So, and I, like, probably not for the reason that you thought, but like, so Roadhouse is great. I thought. 
I yeah, thought it was so. great. Yeah. The reason why I thought that was such a good segue though, is because, you know, we're talking about Netflix. You were talking about how many people are going to watch that fight. Did you know, did you see the numbers that came out yesterday that, that 50 million people streamed roadhouse? I saw it from you, from your show, which oh, is okay. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 yeah 50 that's... million people streamed it. 25 million people streamed the Lord of the Rings show. So it did Ooh. twice as well as the billion dollar Lord of the Rings show. In probably a much shorter time frame, maybe, maybe not, but yeah, I, I mean, because I heard the Lord of the Rings thing that the like the show that they made was just like really bad. It's horrendous. Yeah, it's one of the even... worst pieces of content ever made. For given given the the size of the production, you know, like where they spent that much money, you're like, this better be good. And they're like, all right, so who are we gonna have make it? They're like, well, we'll have these two guys that have produced nothing in their entire life. You're all. <laughs> why are you gonna have them do it they're like well they're gay you know? uh, <laughs> they're woke they're, how they're is that a qualifier for yeah i mean they made they made one of the they they took lord of the rings which is obviously you know i mean it's it's like lord of the rings is one of these old fantasy shows elves are white you know like it's not like a it's not like a racist thing they're not real like you know but they're like elves are white if you feel like you know what I think we need to do is make sure that we have female, female, uh, female trolls. You're like, that's not a thing. And they're all, well, we need to make sure we have a black elf. You're like, okay, this is fucked. And it's exactly, <laughs> like, you know, the main yeah. character, the main, the main uh, protagonist is a girl, and she's just the fucking toughest girl ever. It's just so dumb, and the story's terrible. It's fucking trash. Well, yeah, and then that makes me think of the Mockingbird, Mockingjay, the Hunger Games with Jennifer Lawrence. She was a leading actress that made a, a hit series of movies that a great was movie, a woman. great movies. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Don't you don't have to force these things on like rewriting old shit and turning it woke. Like just make new shit that maybe has a leading actress that kills it. It's been done before. They're acting like women or black men never get leading whatever roles it's bullshit. i don't want to get it yeah it's uh, and so spawn was a great superhero movie that i watched Dude, they just came out with a show maybe like three months ago that is one of the best shows i've ever seen and it's about a fucking female samurai who pretends to be a man because she can't be a man like it's borderline a trans you know girl it's the best sh it's unreal it's called blue-eyed samurai on netflix okay. it is it is legitimately one of the best shows i've ever seen in my entire life i tell everybody about it. it's animated and like i think the reason they made it animated was because it, they were like producing it during the actor strike and so they were like this show so let's just animate this thing it is like if someone watched that show they're like it wasn't that good i'd be like you're fucking getting deleted from my phone you're a retard it's that good. Uh, yeah, you Every single person that's watched it after I recommended it has actually taken the time to either email me or text me and be like, dude, you were not lying. This is this is unreal. I'm like, I know. It's like universal. There's no person with a brain who could watch that show and not just get enthralled with how good that show is. Okay, and it's a show. I've been hearing about the samurai. Now it's not the samurai. The no, Shogun. no, Shogun. You're talking about yeah. the Shogun. That show's good too. Yeah, I haven't watched Blue it. Blue Eyed Samurai's better. Okay. I'm I'm into it. I like your. You'll get you'll get hooked in the first scene, very first scene. You'll be all oh, okay. I'm in. It's hard to watch. There's so many options these days on Netflix and everywhere. It's like hard to pick something, so I end up watching the same yeah. shit over and over again. Well, it's, it's, it's it just feels like a heavy lift to start something new. Yeah, you're like I don't know who these people are. I'm not into the story yet. But Blue Eyed Samurai, trust me, watch that show. Okay, yeah, because I, I like a good recommendation. So, and uh, you recommended Penny Dreadful, which was a really good show that we watched. Dude, I'm probably, I'm probably, I like between tell me something about a fight and tell me about a good show or movie. That's equal for me. Those are like the two things that I'm best at in the world. I could just, I could feed you so many good shows, dude, because I just watched them. I've seen them all, all the yeah. good ones. I okay. think. What do you think about 300 coming up? And you're going to be there. Yeah, I'm going to be there. I'm so excited. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, I mean, yeah. from top to bottom, it's a stacked card. They should have maybe like pushed a couple of the fights into 301 maybe because 301, we're going to Sheath is going to be in the octagon for 300 and 301. Nice. Are you going they, 300? No. I could, mm -hmm. but I'm just 
I've been, I'm, been, I'm traveling, traveling a lot. I'm actually going to be in San Antonio next week for from Monday through Friday. Just I haven't seen the team in like five or six months, and we just need to get together and collaborate and do some some deep work. We call it because we got this new deal with the UFC official underwear for 2024. We just signed for 300 and 301, which was like adding on to the expense of it all. Mm -hmm. And it's so it's putting a lot of pressure on the company to perform at the highest level possible. And you would think you're the you're at the UFC, you're going to be blowing up, and we kind of are, but it's been a couple like a month or two in between events and you don't get the type of spike you would think you would get from an event it's more like the aftermath and the affiliation and having them on our website and on our instagram and everything and and then people like you and the other podcasters we sponsor promoting like this is the official underwear of the ufc it does lend uh, quite a bit of credibility for but sure. it's a huge expense. Yeah, I would and imagine. Yes. We are scrambling to just make it all work. And but they're being really cool. The UFC love them. They've been amazing to work with. And it's they sent me this card. I got this card when when and they sent me like a personalized Venom jacket and it says, Welcome to the UFC family, Robert. We are excited to have you on as a partner. I uh, can't wait to see the partnership flourish. I can read good. That's uh, awesome, dude. Yeah, we're with. The, I mean, we're in yeah. the family. We're partners. That's a fucking major feather in our cap. You know, dude, like that, all, those places like like them and 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 professional teams. Everybody wants to be a sponsor. They they choose. Yes, that was wild that they chose us, and so I feel really blessed. And we're just, and it's putting us in a position. Some people might crumble you could you have no idea how much money they're we're spending with them but and maybe you do but it's more than anything we've ever done but it's like you can either fold under that pressure or you know get get a fire under your ass jesse on fire and mm -hmm. step it up and um perform you know like make it work so yeah. i we're doing it. We're doing everything we need to do. And they're doing what they said they were going to do. And we're going to be in 300. It is going to be an epic, iconic event for the ages. Like every single fight could be a main event. And even just the highlights that are going to be, uh, you know, shown in future fights from this card will be like a residual type of thing. You're going to see Sheath kind of everywhere and and we're also on this coming week's card with brendan allen versus chris curtis mm -hmm. so and we're on the ultimate fighter which is coming out soon and then also uh dana white's contender series and then we have a uh, quite a few more fight nights we're going to do the saudi arabia one because you know nice I'm like a, yeah exactly i'm like a huge ufc fan so i know for the most part, when when it's going to be a good card, and when they announced the Saudi Arabia card, I was like, "Book us for that one, yeah, for sure." Any Abu Dhabi, you know, any you, like you know, those are going to be good cards. Yeah, they go all out for those guys. Yeah. So last we we were asked to sponsor last weekend's with Blanchfield, and I was like, "Nah, I don't really want to do it." But it ended up being a really good card, except for maybe the last fight, which I didn't watch because. We we went out to the pub um, Saturday night, and we were going to be back in time to watch Kyle Nelson, who had been sponsoring since 2013, fight. Um, and when we went to our car, the window was rolled down. We had left our dog in there to just wait for us, and our fucking dog escaped out of the car in the middle of town at 8 p.m. at night, and... Oh we my spent God. the next 22 hours searching for this dog and it was how'd you find it we so it was 6 p.m the next night the sun was about oh to go God. down we had been searching we had one sighting two sightings one sighting was like 15 minutes after she got lost running down the highway like a suicide mission and then we didn't hear anything else until the next morning at 10 a.m and some lady said that she was in her backyard and we were like are you sure Yes, positive. So we're driving up and down this road for 
from 10 a.m. to 6 How did she know and why didn't she grab the dog? I don't, she, she saw it. The dog is like a puppy and she's like super fast and she was like darting around and she would not let anyone touch her. But how she did she know it was your dog or like, how'd you get in touch with her? We posted, we live in a small town in Woodland Park and we posted on Woodland Park community, lost dog, you know, keep an eye oh, out. Oh, it's in your hometown. I was, I was picturing San Antonio. I'm like, oh my God, it's a nightmare. But I mean. Yes. If it had been in anywhere else, it would have been like, she would have been just gone. But we had the sheriff's department looking like uh, the whole community came together to help us look for our did dog. You sleep? Was, I, I don't even know if I could have slept. My wife did not sleep. I slept for about three hours. I don't know if I actually slept, but I laid down from like two to six that night. And then I was back up at six, you know, back out at six thirty. And then we got that call at 10 and then we're like driving up and down this road over and over for eight hours. I, but I ended up, I have a drone. And I was like, let me go. I'd never used the drone. So I went and try, like figured out how to use the drone around 3 p.m., charged the batteries, and went out there. And we were just like waiting for uh, something, you know, it's because you have a drone and you can, and it was, she was in a wooded area. Like people, every, we live in a woodland park, it's fucking pine trees, that millions of pine trees. So I, was, I had already tried flying it and I was looking down, but I couldn't see anything. But then my wife had this like epiphany after whatever. She was like, she was in this lady's backyard. Let's go over there and fly the drone and, you know, and see what we can find. And so I'm flying the drone and I'm flying it down. And, you know, drones make that like they're really loud and annoying kind of sound. So I think I actually scared it her our dog Reese out of her hiding place and because I think she was just scared you know but having like this thing coming down at you and I, I didn't know where she was but I was clearly in the well we were in the right area because she ends up coming out of a, it, it was this huge ditch crevice field so she was deep down anyways my wife's over here calling her I'm flying the drone and she comes out to my wife and my wife, my wife just she's like, Oh my God, I see her. And she started crying and she was like, come up, you know, and she couldn't quite get up, but she ended up making her way up. And then, so the pup was what came to you guys when she saw you guys. Yeah. Even, yeah. So it was 22 hours later, she's but probably fucking like, Oh my God. Like, a like, a like to a dog. That's probably like being stranded on a fucking Island, like with no, no. And then all of a sudden you see a boat. You're like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I was, I would, I thought about it like naked and afraid and yeah. you know, she, but then that reminds me actually, and I was going to mention this to you. I don't know if you know who Justin Governale is. Mm -mm. He's, he's local to San Antonio comedian, jujitsu practitioner coach. And he just did this. He was on naked and afraid the show twice killed it. Definitely recommend watching his season because he really stood out. And I don't think he won. No, yeah, he made it. But because you can win if you just finish, you know. So he finished the first time. And he, but he, he had been like fasting for 10 days, not fasting on purpose, but there was no food. And he was, there was a scene where he's, he's sleeping in his tent and he's having this weird dream. And he has this epiphany about how to catch some fish with his net from his tent. And then they, cause they had like these two sticks and he was like, if you just go like this, he kept doing this motion with these sticks in the net. And the next morning he went out and like did the thing that he had a dream about and he caught this fish and it was quite, you know, theatrical and dramatic. And it, anyways, he's in San Antonio. He was just shooting with JP um, at the range. He was telling me, and I don't know. I feel like you two would get along. Are you do, still doing your podcast? Your other podcast? The, podcast? Well, I just launched a new one with Gabrielle. No, there was like the other doing... one. The other one I, we, I took down off YouTube, which <coughs> was a huge misstep, but whatever. Yeah. Try things, try and fail. No, no, no. It wasn't that. I like, I got two strikes and then I found out they kicked me off the entire platform if I got a third one. So I just took the whole thing down. Oh, that was Jesse on everything though. 
Mm-hmm. I'm talking about, I thought you started a podcast with another MMA dude or, or you were going to with the, Oh, MMA I was going dude. to, we never did it. Oh okay. yeah. We didn't do it. Yeah. yeah. Well, this dude, not anyways, I, I should connect you to potentially just because he's a hustler. He fuck and like you are in both kind of, I don't know, at least you could hang out or do something. Are you still rolling? Yeah. <laughs> How's that going? Good. Yeah. I fucking, just- uh, I, I trapped an omoplata on a fucking black belt yesterday. Nice. I, yeah. I I'm paying one of my employees. Like he does the orders in our warehouse, but one of his hours of the day twice a week is to come over and we do an hour or half an hour of boxing and then half an hour of jujitsu. And I'm training him and spar and I get to spar with him and he doesn't know anything but I'm his boss, so he also can't get too crazy with me. Mm-hmm. Um, and because t- he's like he's 24, so he could just be like buck wild. But I'm like, just you know, go 50, 80 percent. Don't get wild. But I'm learning so much from teaching him. You know, I'm a white belt, but I also did nogi for my whole existence, which they don't offer belts. You know, yeah. And but now I'm doing gi because I find it to be easier to teach and train. And sometimes w- with no gi, your knees can hit like smash knees. I mean, just for example, as what, you know, and with the gi, there's a, like a tiny little bit of padding and friction that prevents it from getting too slippery and crazy. It's just way different. Like gi is like, gi is like, uh, get setups wait for reaction take advantage where like no gi there's a lot more motion i I mean the really high level guys i mean like gordon ryan does get setups wait for reaction and take advantage but like it's way more advanced in no gi to do that than uh you know in at least i mean yeah like with the gi for like with the gi you can slow it down a lot yeah and you can yeah you can like just grab fabric and that helps with uh trapping arms and whatever yeah i but i've gotten a lot better through teaching which i find to be uh fascinating and we'll be watching Corey sanhagen training seminar uh, videos on his youtube or or uh instagram and he goes over like some very basic techniques like a one minute little clip and then i'll practice that with uh brandon as my dude and We'll we'll just warm up hitting the pads, pop, 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 you know, like one two three, one two three six, one two five, whatever six, and and then after like two or three rounds of that, then we play spar. So we're we're punching, but we're not like hitting each other really. You know, I'll hit him in the stomach, and then and I, I'm I'm using like a Sean Strickland slash Mayweather kind of yeah yeah like dance. a Philly shell. <laughs> Yeah, and but there's so many different techniques when it comes to boxing, and then so we get in, we break a sweat boxing, then we pull the mats out, and then we do jujitsu for half an hour, and it is like medicine, you know. Yeah, it, it is the best thing ever, and everyone should ha- have some level of experience with that because you can just benefit from it ultimately. <laughs> yeah i do it every i do it most i mean honestly if we weren't doing this i'd be going to class right now oh, but yeah? i'm going tonight i'm going okay. tonight yeah i'm doing it like twice a week because i'm 46 and i twice a week is good enough for me to get my you know what i want out of it which is just that it clears your head it wakes you up it makes you feel like get de-stress de-stresses yeah. you and i just i love it so much so yeah it's the best dude i go in and like and you can you know you can go as hard as you want it's like Mm -hmm. learn a technique then like at ours we do learn technique then we do partials we do most of our sparring from specific positions and then you know then you do full rounds do whatever you want and then but you know it's like if i'm completely gassed out i'm like all right i'm done or you know usually at that point some black belt whose opinion i respect too much to turn down then i go and do another round get smashed into the ground and then i feel really good afterwards because like, uh, yeah. you know it's like it's like working with a trainer you know where you're like i'm done they're like no you're not you know like yeah 
that peer yeah. pressure to keep going will pushes you to a next level that you can never do. Even maybe with a personal trainer, that would help. But like when it comes to training on your own, we never push oh, ourselves yeah. as hard. Yeah. With my, like how visible I am because of the channel, like I, I couldn't not go if I wanted to. Cause like, as soon as I don't go, you know, they're like, they're, you know, like all the guys whose opinion I really care about be like, what are you doing? Where are you at? I'm like, yeah, right, I'm coming. You know, uh, <laughs> I was just some other guy in class. Like, you know, people disappear all the time. I can't disappear, <clears throat> which is good. Yeah. It keeps you accountable. I remember, you know, your elbow had gotten fucked up last year and it's all better. Well, I had a, uh, well, I had an elbow where I had like a huge, like bubble, like bursitis. And then I had, uh, my bicep tendon tour. That's all better. Yeah. They're both all better. Okay. Yeah. I actually I, had a back thing <clears throat> earlier that this, like, like maybe like, I've been better for probably like two months, but man, at the end of last year, my back was fucked. I couldn't put on my, couldn't put on my pants. Like, you know, like I'd like sit down to put on shoes. I just, it was, it was gnarly, dude. It hurt. So you just took and some I, time off or. Yeah. I took time off and, um, and, uh, I'd say I like was off, off for like three weeks, like where I didn't, I couldn't train at all. And then, mm -hmm. um, and then, I got recommended a chiropractor by uh, this guy who trains with us, who was a, an offensive lineman for the chiefs for fucking 10 years. Like he's an all pro and he's like, and so he sent me to this dude and I go to check this out. I went there last week and the fucking undertaker was there from WWE. So this guy yeah. does, this guy does all these big, enormous motherfuckers. That's like his, uh, he does all the WWE guys. He does. There's tons of these NFL guys that go there. And he fixed me like he like, I mean, it, it, this thing had lingered for like months where it was like, I was, I was really having to like, not go hard. And then I actually really fucked it up one day where it was like, now nah, I'm injured. And, yeah. uh, and I went to, I just, I, I don't know. I didn't, I, I wasn't sure. It was like one of those things where like, you know, you hear about people getting lower back problems that like never go away, you know? And, and like, I started thinking and I went there and he started working on me and like within Within two visits, I could tell he was going to be able to fix it. Like, it was like, it was better. He's like, look, dude. He's like, within about two to three weeks, you're going to feel good enough to where you can train. He's like, don't. I'm mm -hmm. like, what do you, I'm like, he's like, don't, or don't train hard. I'm like, all right. He's like, trust me. I was like, all right. So I went and I, I went easy and I did feel good, but I went easy. And then like, I would go easy and then it would start to get sore a little bit again. But yeah, he walked me through and he got me all the way back. I was actually going to go. I was going to go, I think I might go, I was going to go tomorrow, but I'm getting tattooed tomorrow. So I can't, but whatever. I think it's good to take time off. Um, I'm not sure how old you are. I think you're younger than me, but not like that much younger. Just a little bit. And so, you know, you don't want to have these lingering issues, but I, it's going to take time off and go watch. Like if you go watch, yeah. it's crazy how much stuff you learn. Like I, I went, uh, so Shanji, do you know? Do you follow like like competitive jujitsu? Like, no. do you know who Shanji Shanji Ribeiro is? No. So he's like, uh, I think he might have won the most <clears throat> world championships ever. He's got, uh, I don't know, he's like top five all time jujitsu. And then like, and then my other professor, Victor Hugo, who's arguably, I mean, outside of Gordon Ryan, probably the best grappler in the world. Him and Marigali. No, I've um, heard of Victor Hugo, yeah, yeah. So he's my other guy, and uh, so. Um, flow grappling was going to do a uh, like a video shoot of our pro class on Tuesday morning. And Shanji sent out a message to the entire fucking school and was like, Hey, flow grappling is coming tomorrow at nine 30. Anyone who can make it go. And I know that's pro class because I'm friends with all the pros and I'm like, all right. So I go, I'm the only fucking one who went. So it's all the pros and me. And so <laughs> like, so it's like these guys are, you know, like one of the guys, um, one of the guys, Yippee, who's uh, like a, I don't know, fucking as as high a judo practitioner as exists, and he's uh, like a, you know, he's a he's he's gonna get his black belt very shortly. He won worlds at brown belt. He's so he's doing ADCC trials and he's preparing for that. Victor's preparing for worlds, uh, and then he also has another. He's fighting on UFC Fight Pass again. He beat, you know, that he fought and beat Nicky Rod, right? Like on, uh, he fought Nicky Rod and he smashed him. He beat the fuck out of Nicky Rod. Destro like, 
complete and total domination win over Nikki Rod, like very recently on uh, on who's number one. And then, um, but anyway, so like, so I'm there fucking odd man out. We're like drilling and, you know, and I go and it's like, you know, we're rotating in. It's mm-hmm. like, dude, I'm, I'm like, I'm good. Like we were doing one drill where people were starting in front headlock. And I'm strong enough to where I can make it real gnarly for anybody if I start in front headlock. So, like, you know, I'm I'm useful there, you know. <laughs> but, like, aside from that, I'm doing these fucking rolls with these guys. And I'm like, Jesus. It's like, there's just no right answer with these fucking guys. Especially because they're all fucking huge. So, like, I don't even have a strength advantage against them either. It's like, normally against really good guys, I at least am much stronger than they are. And against these guys, I don't even have that, dude. So, it's like... But so at the end, I ended up, I kind of sat, uh, they were doing like rounds, like pro rounds. And I sat on the side and was watching them and I was picking up so much stuff, just watching where I'm like, and Steve, um, another one of the pros, he's like, he's like, just watch this, this, this. Like I, I found that I improve more watching than doing. I don't know why that is dude, but it's like even more than like going through the classes. Like when I watch, it's like when I, when I, I've kind of always been like that. Like I have a really good golf swing and it came from just watching people Mm. swing a golf club. You know what I'm like? Oh, okay. So they do that. And then I can kind of like, I can, I've always been good at kind of like imitating movements that I see, you know? Yes. So I don't know. I think what, like if you take a break and go watch for a while, it's like, you know, as long as you're watching people who are good, you know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah. I feel like I've learned a lot just from watching the UFC, you know? Um, Oh yeah. And I never was trained how to do a head and arm triangle choke, or maybe I was, but I've gotten like way better with that. And when you get it from the side guard position, but then you switch like to the other half guard or the other side, put your ear on the, put your ear against your own shoulder and then switch the other side. Yeah. And then it just like lot, like sinks it in and tightens it up. And that's something that I didn't know until I saw a few people doing it. Like you can get the head and arm choke, but then if you switch sides, it just is a whole next level of co- uh, compression. It's hard to, it's hard to finish if you don't go on the, if like, if you're not on the yeah, right side, exactly. but like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I remember like my first, my first day doing jujitsu, I took someone's back, you know, and they're like, and they're like, this is not your first fucking day. I'm like, no, it's my first day. It's just like, I just watched so much UFC. I knew so much shit about jujitsu before I ever did. Like get, thinking about a person on their real first day of jujitsu versus like where I was at. It's like, I, I could have walked in there and said I'd been doing jujitsu for fucking six months and no one would have batted an eye at it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I love taking the back. I love it to get, get the back. Nice rear naked yeah. choke. It's just, and then... I will all like grab the shoulder or, you know, grab underneath their arm so they can't like spin out of it and they try to spin the other way. And there's certain things that I've, you know, you pick up along the way and I've been doing it since I was 20. So like 26 years, but on and off. I remember yeah. this, there was, I joined the army at 26 and I had already done a little bit of jujitsu and they were implementing combat jujitsu or not com- whatever some combat training but it was basically jujitsu and so i was like "Ooh, let me really like go to these classes get certified i went there on one of my days off because you know like i love this shit and so i went and i was talking to the coach and he was like oh you want to you want to play let's let's put all the gear on and so he put this full body suit pads helmet everything and it took like 15 minutes to get suited up or whatever. And this guy, I feel like he was way bigger than me. As one of my excuses here for what I'm about to tell you. But it was like one punch. I didn't know what I was doing. I'd never done striking. I'd only done jujitsu. So I'd never done stand-up striking. And so he just like right hooks me, basically knocks me out. And I was like, and we're done. And mm-hmm. that, that's that. And I did not even try again which i was just thinking about that last night i was like why the fuck did he do that like you know you want to like maybe show he broke your spirit on your first fucking class it was kind of fucked up and we were yeah it was just one-on-one like i was almost like he didn't he's like you want to see what this is all about i'll I'll teach you a lesson right now and uh so i don't think that was necessarily good for my overall training no that's like the worst coaching ever yeah it was really kind of fucked up and that happened in another gym how old was he I mean, I was probably 27 and he was probably like in his 
early 30s you know yeah that's inexcusable at that age it was like, weird what the fuck are you doing dude yeah. you're like yeah i've never done this he's all ooh, cool let me use you as a punching bag then yeah it made, made me think of sean strickland and that one guy uh frico yeah. or what's nico ridiculous <laughs> i just like i can't i hate that shit dude <clears throat> I hate yeah. that shit. And when I'm like, like when I'm, dude, I mean, I don't do that to guys. I know that I'm better than, you know what I mean? Like just, even in, in jujitsu, like I do just enough to where like, I don't let them win, you know, like basically, yeah. you know, like I'll practice my own stuff to, you know, I'm like, okay, I got that move. And then I just, you know, when it's their turn and go. I'm like, you know, they're trying to work it. I just don't let them submit me or sweep me. That's it. Like, I don't try to like pass and smash them. I don't try to like, you know what I mean? Like I could fucking do that anytime I want. I don't do it. It's right. like, why would I do that? You know what I mean? It's like, I don't under, like, I don't understand. It's like, dude, you have nothing to prove. You know you're better than them. So, like, what, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, it was the strangest experience, and I, I had, I think I like black, blocked it out for quite a few years, and I was, it just so happened to be thinking about it last night, and I was, yeah, you're, I don't, I don't know why, I just don't feel like doing striking. You're all, hey, how'd it go the one time you did it? You're all, some guy fucking knocked me unconscious with the first shot. You're all, mm, I wonder if that has something to do with it. Like, yeah, I mean, fuck, I didn't go unconscious, but it hurt bad enough. And I was laying there and I was like, this is, I'm not getting back up with this guy. Yeah. I just, so we, all the gear we put on, and it was like this weird ninja suit in the helmet and everything. It was very elaborate, uh, you know, safety gear or whatever. And, but it doesn't seem like it does very much good if he fucking knocked you out with one shot. Touche. Yeah. So see, I, like... I started, boxing with gilbert smith about two like during covid and then that's when i kind of fell in love with it again and i really enjoy striking now Oh, i'm looking at it right now what the fuck you're seeing like the this gear weird yeah, yeah like I, I looked up military uh self-defense training suit yeah okay so i mean you could just put on shin guards and a headgear it seems like all this other yeah. stuff is pretty unnecessary yeah, it was it was a little ridiculous, and I like the idea of shin guards. We haven't implemented. Kits. They've got him doing jujitsu in it. What the fuck? Like, I don't understand this thing at all. I haven't ever. I haven't looked it up since that experience. So I don't even. I vaguely remember. Look at this. Can you see here? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, you, at the bottom one. Oh yeah, yeah. See, yeah, it was insane. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so we did all that, and then just one punch. And but I think now I would know better to move and shit. I must have just been standing right in front of him. You know, like hey. Yeah, you. Well, and the first shot too. You're like, all right. So are we going now? He's all here. I'll show you. We're going by punching <laughs> in the face. <laughs> yeah. So that was horrible, but. I still think everyone should be doing some type of martial art for yeah. so many reasons. I heard this recently, which is kind of fascinating. Aristotle and Plato would, they were like in the Greco-Roman era, and they would wrestle before they would start philosophizing and shit because they would get them in that flow state. you know. And you know how you get after a good roll, you're all done, and you're all sitting around talking, and we're all like almost high, and then yeah, you lose mood. 45 minutes. You're like, your wife's like, why are you not home? And you're like, oh shit, I was just here bullshitting for 45 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. And they would take that time and philosophize and come up with the meaning of life and this type of shit. Do you know who Marconi is? Have you ever heard that name? Marconi? This is not any jujitsu related name. Uh, the former senator in Kingdom of Italy. He is responsible for the invention of sending data through the air so there's no segue totally different thing i'm giving a speech in a couple of days and it's about like success principles but people have ideas all the time you know about businesses and whatever but this dude and he actually took hertz and tesla's theories but he brought them to commercial practice and he's the guy that fucking basically invented the radio television, cell phones, sending data through the air. And imagine having the idea of sending data through the air, even now, like how you would come up with a solution for that. And he died at age 63 
after his ninth heart attack. Whoa. He must have been stressed out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the point being, I don't know. I'm giving a, but the reason I bring that up is because I'm giving a speech on it in a couple of days. But it is fast because I had the idea for Sheath and ideas come, you know, a thousand times a day. Like everyone yeah. has ideas all the time, but it's about like, like your buddy who hadn't eaten in 10 days, dude. Yeah, exactly. Then that's, and it came to him from the universe or the mind survival Maybe. instinct dude yeah but it, like, it came to him in a dream and that's and that's i mean that's wild shit but that's a good connection that was a great connection. dude i had yeah dreams like, like dreams are wild dude last like sometimes you ever have a like a night where you start dreaming something where you're almost in like a parallel universe with your wife like but like a different life like a yeah. totally different life dude mm-hmm like yeah. I had one of those last night and it was awful, dude. Like a terrible, <laughs> terrible one. And like, and I woke up and I'm like, Oh my God, thank God. Cause I kept like, it was like, uh, and then I went back to sleep and I was there again. And then I woke up and I'm like, Jesus, what the fuck? Went back to sleep. I was there again. Fucking same continuous dream all night that I wanted to get the fuck out of. And you're like, I don't know, dude. I don't know what the nature of the fucking world is at all. Like exactly, I, you know, it's so you know, weird. That could be another life that I live. You know, like because I, I've always thought that this, like, my life is about like Gabrielle is the center point of like this whole experience, and it would shock me zero if all of my experiences have her in it. And it's like this other one, fuck, man, was awful, dude. It was just like. It's yeah, it, it, like you just keep going back there, and you're like, "What the fuck, man?" You know, <laughs> and then you wake up, you're like, "Dude, I just dreamt that again." What the fuck, man? Exactly. Yeah, the mind I don't is understand. Very, yeah, very strange. I that you're no making me connection re- whatsoever to this world, like none, like not like nothing. Same two people, like not you know, it wasn't anything bad with her. It was just like I, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's Maybe you die and you just go to the next, you know, the next one. You know what I mean? Like you just, you're just in the next one. We'll find out soon enough. I'm hoping. I don't think we'll know. I don't think you'll know. Yeah, you, know? you wouldn't know. It would just, you would just pop up into a new existence and you would forget everything from the previous life and start over again. And I don't know. Yeah, I, I just, I was watching Ray Kurzweil on Rogan, who is like this leading expert in life extension kind of science and he's thinking that within five years we'll be able to enhance you know living capability to be able to reach 500 years old within Um, five years within five years because of the speed at which ai is advancing and you know i'm i've been on that kind of like fountain of youth search for a few years and i think so many people are have been doing it since the beginning of time let alone with all the technology we have now and the birth rate declining it could it could happen you know yeah it could happen that means you like your life i like my life i would love to extend my life yeah exactly i got shit to do i'm still and i'm still a baby Mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of things i think 500 would be somewhat sufficient maybe by 500 i'd be like all right i need okay. another 500 yeah exactly 500 is so, 500 so far out that you're like that's forever yeah and yeah. who knows what would be happening like where we'll be in different planets or different dimensions and or extinct yeah exactly so <laughs> i'm curious oh, i got a great show for you though if you're into that shit man Tell me. jesus Three body problem on on Netflix. You actually, if you're into that stuff, watch that first. Then watch Blue Eyed Samurai. I am into it. Okay, so three body. I we started Good. watching it, and then I, I didn't really know where it was going, and I tur- oh, in bro. Like five or ten minutes. I turned it off. Oh my god, watch it, dude. It's you know it's made by the guys who did Game of Thrones, and it's and it's about it's about this book. Uh, in don't look the book up. You don't like you don't want to know where it's going. Like you want to be surprised by what's where, what it is. Yeah. And uh but trust me, it's going somewhere. It's worth it. It's worth it. Fucking watch it. It's okay. awesome. Love I ripped it. once I once I got into it, I couldn't stop talking about it, but I couldn't tell Gabrielle anything about it because I didn't want to fuck it up, you know? And uh-huh. then uh 
I finished it and it's actually, <clears throat> it's actually a trilogy of books. And so, you know, you get to the end of this season is the end of the first book. Okay. And I was like, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Don't look up the next books. Don't look up the next books. I lasted like three hours and I looked up the next books and now I know, I know I'll, I'm such an idiot, dude. I, fun, uh, I fucked up the next season. like, I did that with Game of Thrones too. Like uh, there were a couple of things in Game of Thrones, you know, after like season one, season two or whatever, where I was like, I wonder what's, and I looked up like one or two things. And so there are these two major plot points in Game of Thrones that I knew were coming. And then when they finally happened in, in like season four, I'm like, hey, finally, now I don't know what the fuck is going to happen, dude, you know? Yeah, but uh, but three body problem. I mean, that is, is it a show or a documentary? Is it a drama? No, I, it's a I show. couldn't. Okay, so it, but it's not okay. So there's they're actors and it's a show, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't know what show it was and, and it's season season one just came out on Netflix and like they're they're all fucking concerned because they spent so much money on it and it's like supposed to be this huge epic and people aren't watching it, which is insane because it's so fucking good, dude. But it yeah. Is, I felt like it started off a little funky and I was like, I don't understand what's happening. So we just, and you know, like turned it off. So I'll have, I, I will, I will. Oh, so the beginning, through. the beginning, the, 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 the most prolific forward thinking scientists are killing themselves. Mm. There's a reason, believe me, like there's every, like there's no, there's no, uh, there's no string that you pull on. That's not going somewhere and not going somewhere where you're like, Whoa, like there, so a lot of those shows, a lot of shows that that start like that, you know, are like these NBC shows. All, all the scientists in the world are killing themselves. And you're like, oh, my God, what's happening? And like, they don't even know where the fuck they're going. Like, they have no idea where they're going with it. That's why those shows always suck balls because they just go, here's this mystery. They have no idea how they're going to pay off on the mystery. So it's fucking dumb in this show. It's like mystery. And you're like, all right, I don't know what's going on. Then mystery. And then like big mystery and then you literally find out like the next episode what is going on there and then you find then something else and you find out the next episode what's going on there so it's like constantly paying off these big okay, good. like mystery boxes it's fucking awesome like it's, right. i can't recommend it enough dude it's amazing i will definitely check it out because yeah my wife hates when she's like where is this going and like, oh no you'll you'll know where it's going in every single question where you're like, huh? So wait, all the scientists, you'll find out what's going on within two episodes every time. That's that's sufficient. That's not like dragging it on for like a no, season. No, it's not, dude. You'll get you'll get super hooked. Like you'll get for sure. You'll okay. get did you watch Dune? Dune? Dune of course. Dune? Okay. I, I thought that both. was really good. Oh, both exceptional. Yeah. Exceptional. Yeah, I haven't seen the second one, but I'm like, I want to. Dude, the second one is it's like the first one never ended. Like it's like the Dune one and Dune two are one movie. Like it's, yeah. honestly, it's it's just one seven hour movie. There's no, they're indistinguishable from each other. Except that you know the the story gets a little you know the story gets bigger in in Dune two. There are more characters, but mm -hmm. like it gets a lot bigger actually. But like, uh, but yeah, there's there's no. It's not like like if, if I just popped a scene on from Dune 2 or Dune 1 and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference at all. They're like, it's just one story. It's fucking amazing. Yeah, I was loving Dune 1. I was, and I was like, I'm so skeptical and it's hard for me to try and watching a new thing these days. But I turn it on and just the cinematography, the, the outfits and the actors and the story and the fucking the voice thing yeah. like get over here like yeah. thing and i was like this is kind of this is kind of cool i'm digging this yep. and they did a great job at dune one of letting you know that they're like this kid who starts off kind of like you know you're like oh this kid's got potential and he just keeps getting like better and better and better that continues to escalate in in the second one where it's like oh this kid is a fucking savage dude hell yeah he's yeah yeah i gotta go to the theater we don't have a theater anywhere near us dude and, you uh, missed dune 2 in the theater i think it's still i think it might still be out in the theater i'll have to double check because i heard it was you know like with the imax experience or whatever yeah i'm pretty sure it's gone you know what i did here speaking of um of good flicks is that movie civil war that's coming out. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they kind of sold it like it's an action movie. So I, I listened to someone who has seen it and they were like, dude, th they're like, I don't know what fucking retard made the, Oh yeah. Dune two is still up. They're like, I don't know what retard 
made the fucking trailer for this movie but they made it look like an action movie they're like that is not what this movie is like they're like it's it's like they had like a really smart person make the movie you know you know who made the movie i'm pretty sure let me actually double check this before i tell you because i don't want to say uh it's like ridley scott or somebody a big no i think i'm pretty sure it's the dude um who made uh yeah it is okay so the guy who directed this is the one who made ex machina Nice. And have you seen Ex Machina? Yeah, I love that movie. Fucking a couple incredible times. movie. Yeah. Yeah. So it's that guy. So they're like, you know, you have like this Ex Machina, like really like big thinking guy who made this movie. And then they handed it over to like the trailer department and some woke retard made it, you know, and they're like, oh, this is going to be about the Trumpers. It's like, that's yeah. definitely, and they're like, that's not what it's about at all. You know, they did do a good job. Like I, I knew it wouldn't be that just from the very first line of the movie where they're like the Texas and California union. And you're like, okay, so they're going out of their way to be nonpartisan. You know, they're like, cause obviously Texas and California would never fucking be on the same side in the real world. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's a good point. But it may, yeah, but it, it makes you think like Texas wants to succeed, not succeed, secede, which they do. I know a lot of they've always wanted to be like their own country, and uh, so and then and then uh, that that was what I thought was behind like the concept of the movie is they're trying to secede, and then we have to fight them to keep them from doing that. No, oh, it's like. Um... Yeah, it's like, I don't know. I mean, the, the, at least what this guy said was he's like, this is like a thinker's movie. He's like, this is like, a, it's and, and really what it's about is like the, 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 that the villain is the media in this movie. Yes. Well, that's true. <laughs> at least, unless we, you're the media. Are you the media now? <laughs> Fuck no. I'm actually, re- I was looking at this. It's like, uh, you know, listen, like, like the Yahoo review, Alex Garland tears America apart counting on divided audience to prevent his worst case horror show Shut the fuck up geek uh, loser i just watched mark uh, cuban on lex friedman and he's very smart and he's very successful but if you would listen to him on lex and he's very he's so biased it's he's annoying so left-wing bias it's embarrassing yeah. It, I it, can't it's, I, no i yeah i was like oh my god shut up you fucking you're smart you're successful you don't have to be this like super douchebag that doesn't like elon hates trump what he was like i'll vote for biden if he was on his deathbed over trump and blah, blah, blah. what like, a fucking retard you're all oh so you just rather not have a president then you fucking idiot it's, and he's still he's still like a fucking vax guy. You're like, are you yeah. fuck? Are you serious? Right. And what would they have to do to lose their credibility with you? Like, put a fucking put like the Resident Evil like zombie virus into it. Like, they that lied was, about everything. It didn't work. Everyone knows that. How could you still be defending these fucking guys that locked us away? I just can't. I fucking well, the, yeah, the lies in general. Like they lie to you over and over again. And at what point are you going to stop believing what you. they're telling you? Yeah, it's like now it's to the point where for me, like whatever they say, I'm like even the Diddy thing, the the uh, the bridge falling down. I'm like, what the what's really happening here? Because what you're telling me is probably not what that was really going down. Yeah, I got to jump in a second, but I will tell you yeah. one thing about the bridge is. Uh, so I I looked at that video. Did you see the video of them when they sped it up 8x and it looked Mm. like the thing just turned directly into Uh. the fucking thing and knocked it over? And I was like, whoa, dude. So I I did I covered that, but then um a good friend of mine who is super Trumper, he pilots those fucking ships for a living in New Orleans, and he hit me up. He's like, dude, he's like, for sure. He's like, that was definitely not on purpose. He's like, if I told you how how often shit like that almost happens, he's like, you would be afraid. He's like that. He's like, for sure, it's not on purpose. And I'm like, but for it sure. looked like, like there were these charges going off on the top of the bridge. Like it was losing those... power. Okay, but if you, dude, if you watch, if you watch this video of it, like of it sped up, it turns straight into the column. Like, I mean, str- hang on. I think it was on DC Drano. Hang on. Uh, I'll see if I can find it super quick. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, we got about a minute, and I will let you go. I got a a big meeting coming up myself. We're going international, which we're already nice. international, but we're gonna inc- improve our shipping internationally. Nice. 
Okay, I can't find it. Whatever, I'll text it to you. I gotta yeah, go too. anyway. Yeah, thank you so much for coming on. Check out welcome, the latest podcast news with Jesse on Fire, available on YouTube, everywhere. Yes, sir. Um, he's he's the man. And thank you for joining me, and we'll see you guys Thank you, sir. All, All right, right, brother. Later. Right, peace. Okay, that was fun. I love that guy. He's always ready to rock. Did a little phone checking, but he was more, it seemed like he was checking for stories. So that's okay. He wasn't like checking texts and stuff, but appreciate him. I appreciate you. I will be back next week. I'm going to try to get Kyle Nelson, who's on a winning streak with the UFC. We've been sponsoring him for over 10 years, and he's finally coming into his own. So lots of stuff on the horizon. You know, Sheath is still killing it. We're very grateful for the UFC partnership and all of our lo loyal, supportive fans. Tell your friends, sheath.com. We bought sheath.com. We were Sheath Underwear. Now we're both Sheath or SheathUnderwear.com. And, you know, we're always releasing some new product. So give us a shot. 100% money back guarantee on the first pair. If you don't like it, you don't even have to send it back. Just let us know and we'll refund you. That's how much we believe in the product. And I, I mean, like, I wouldn't bullshit you. I'm not going to sit here and tell you it's good if it's not good. I would be embarrassed and I'm not embarrassed. I'm proud to tell you the quality, construction, durability, the fabric, the cooling, the pouch, the whole shit is fire. And you got to try it for yourself. But otherwise, have a good week. See you soon. Love you. Bye.